was starting to make some noise in the music press. We'd play uh, some clubs and a fight would break out and there just happened to be a photographer there and they catch the fight and they put, you know, it was like, there was always something going on, you know what I mean? Something out of the ordinary. Good Lord. Now, I want to know one thing. What? Are you serious or are you just making it, trying to make me laugh? It's what? Nothing, a rude word. Next question. No, no. What was the rude word? Shit. And we didn't know this was going out live, you know. Dirty bastard. Go on, again. <laughs> you dirty fucker. What a clever boy. What a yeah. fucking rotter. Well, that's it for tonight. The phones are all lighting up, lights were going on everywhere, and Malcolm come running out as red faced as you can imagine. Quick, let's get out of here. The following day was incredible. Every newspaper ran headlines the filth and the fury of the night the air turned blue. Call it punk, we call it filthy lucre. I had to go to work that day and sat with everybody, you know, uh, there were sort of like middle-aged guys reading the newspaper, the steam coming out of their ears. It was really funny. What about the word punk? It means worthless, nasty. Johnny Rotten, are you happy with this word? No, the press gave us it. It's their problem, not ours. We never called ourselves punk. It just became like a circus doing something to get in the press, you know. That was McLaren's thing to keep the media thing going, and the music really kind of went out the window. One week after EMI dumped the Sex Pistols, A&M Records picked them up. Before EMI could get rid of them, it had to buy off the contract. And here they were, signing a new contract that could make them a lot of money, and they already had a song to record for A&M in honor of the Queen's Jubilee. You thought you'd gotten rid of us, didn't you? But you were wrong, old bean. Cause we're back with a vengeance. Go take the queen, my son. At that, that time, nobody in England said anything bad about the queen. There was this most incredible attempt to stop anybody hearing it and buying it. We could no longer play anywhere. The records were never going to be heard on the radio. They were banned. Take a boat on the Thames and we could play on the water a quarter of a mile behind the Queen's flotilla. The boat was finally surrounded by the river police. I was arrested and spent the night in jail. And God Save the Queen did become number one. You cannot affect change unless you attack the very things that are keeping you down. The class system in Britain this is perpetuated continually by the very idea that you have a royal family there, and that's not to be tolerated. The Sex Pistols' current record, God Save the Queen, is at number one of the capital hit line today. The IBA, which administers the Broadcasting Act, has advised us this, that particularly at this time, this record is likely to cause offense to a number of our listeners. And have asked there was such paranoia around the city. Paul Cook was violently attacked. Johnny Rotten and Chris Thomas were attacked with knives. I, funnily enough, wasn't attacked at all. We had to be careful because a lot of uh, reactionary people come out of the woodwork, you know? And they, they just wanted to um, teach us a lesson, so they would say, or oh, whatever, you know? So it did get quite heavy, you know? When all is said and done, really, that all that I seen was a bunch of spotty kids being naughty. But somehow, <laughs> it worked. We hit on something there, not deliberately so, instinctively. The album came out. It was, again, a public scandal. The name was considered too vulgar, and we were destined to go to America to tour. It was Malcolm's idea when the Pistols came over to America not to play the typical rock star hangouts, uh, not to come to CBGB's and not to go to the Whiskey in Los Angeles, but to come and play in America. 
we played at bars that were basically in shopping centers, and uh, we played someplace in Oklahoma City, and Dallas, and God knows where, all these uh, places that were not really at all on any kind of standard rock tour route. Um, but there were bars that local bands used to play in, so they would come in and just play for these people who wanted to hear rock and roll, and it was pretty rowdy and pretty loose and pretty real. He fucking put us right out there in the boonies, you know, deliverance. I felt like we were just like a circus, you know what I mean? And Sid was so out of it, he didn't care, he would fight anybody. I can't believe someone didn't get shot. I didn't give a shit about the music anymore. You know, it didn't, it didn't matter. You know, it was all about, you know, just... We were, we were all off the edge, totally wasted all the time, you know. When you first go out on tour and you're out traveling in a coach for 10 months, uh, and it's a shock to the system for a lot of people. Some people take to it better than others, and others start having to take pills, and you're partying a lot and staying up late, and you know, because you like it. When we got to San Francisco, because so much was going on by that time, we just totally burnt ourselves. And I think everyone had had enough by that time. We didn't want to carry on. Coming to America was like a nail in the coffin. I drove almost 200 miles all the way from Silver Springs just to see it, and I enjoyed every minute. And I drive 200 more miles to see them again tomorrow night. I really enjoyed it. I think these people are where it's at right now. It was great. That's what, you know, music's meant to be. You know, I think that's where rock is going and where it's going to stay. No, Bob. This is not... So my sound was really horrible. Nothing worked. I had a terrible cold. Sid was like fucked up. He didn't play any notes. And John was like, you know, Mr. Righteous and, you know, dig my life. You know what I mean? And the ego was fucking blown out of proportion. And I just thought when we was doing it, when we was playing the shows, what the fuck's this all about? What's the purpose of this? This ain't how it used to be like, you know? And uh, we were playing like shit and everyone was loving it. Ah, ha, ha. Ever get the feeling you've been cheated? Good night. When I said that on stage, ever get the feeling you've been cheated, I meant that for us. We had to perform this, this stuff, because that's what it had become by then. Just stuff, just rock and roll, just trundling out night after night. It, it, it lost its point. It was too much like a Rolling Stones on tour affair. Too big. And indeed, when things get that way, then you should stop. It's the easiest thing in the world to just stop. If you don't want to be a pop star, just stop being one. The Sex Pistols came along, made an incredible amount of chaos, and then broke up, you know? And left this, you know, left everyone else to clean up their mess, you know? I mean, the Ramones had to go out there and keep playing. We kind of felt us and the Sex Pistols would become almost like the Beatles and the Stones of the 60s, you know what I mean? Like we were the new revolution, let's say, you know? But um, America wouldn't have it that way. And no record company wanted to um, touch anybody after the Sex Pistols um, who, who was in a punk band. 